Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So today is March 25th, and we're going to cover a Zoom session. Especially, it's, it's really critical how to use Zoom and any collaboration technology because most of us now are working at home now. We've got to find ways to collaborate, kind of add value in the world, run our businesses, and much more. So the people on this session come from different backgrounds. Many of you have met in the past, in some cases from my engineering school, going back 20, 30 years ago, uh, the Parrington community perhaps, a little bit more about myself. So um, I, I'm Joseph Arquis. I, I lead masterminds, communities. We launched something called Success Circles about 15 years ago. It's a peer-to-peer -peer coaching community for entrepreneurs, especially working at home. Basically, we, pro we provide them a virtual co-working space where they can connect, engage, huddle up each day. And that's Success Circles. Some of you know me through the Power Team. We're the largest personal development community in New York City. Um, we, just, we have events each month. We bring great personal development speakers, leaders on stage. I think Suzanne, you're, we had an event with you a few years ago, um, a live event. We also had a, had a, I think we had a Zoom event with you as well too at some point where we talked about your, your skills around uh, link letter and voice. What I realized is we all have superpowers. And AJ, you talk about too in the work you do. We all have unique powers in terms of the gifts that our creators given us. And there's an opportunity here in, in utilizing this platform towards sharing these gifts with others on, on many levels, many fold. Zoom is one collaboration platform. There's several out there. Prior to Zoom, many of you may have been using Skype. If you've been using Skype, but you're welcome to put yes in the menu. Perhaps you put, or in the chat feature on, 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 on Zoom here, in our session here, perhaps you use a conference software. So there's Maestrocom, which is one that I used years ago. We use Uber Conference now. There's so many choices out there. There's Google Hangouts too as well. I'd say amidst all of these different choices, the one that's easily accessible and usable, I find it's to be Zoom. It's, it's easy because it's one link you send to people, they hop on the call, they're, they're there. There's no other integrating um, like Google Hangouts, you know, other technology. You do have to install the app, which most cases with a good internet connection can take you about 10 seconds, five, 10 seconds to be able to do, do so. You can install it across different platforms. My daughter yesterday, she had a ballet class with her classmates, so she, I have, I have an extra phone, so I have an older phone um, that, that I have, so we basically put this onto a, um, a tripod, and she was able to do ballet with her class yesterday. This morning, I got up five in the morning, and we had a BNI meeting, a Business Networking International meeting with the largest BNI group in New York City. We had 130 people on a, on a call, and every single person got to share over the course of that hour and a half. It was amazingly well orchestrated. Um, and the better you are at utilizing this platform, the, um, it, it, you know, the easier it is to kind of navigate, manage people. One of the favorite, my favorite words that I use a lot, particularly in success circles, is the word context. So context for me is establishing the environment. So right now, um, right now we have about 20 of us on this call. So it's up to me, if I do my job right, to set the context for the space. So you think about the word context, it's basically, it's like one word that kind of establishes the parameters for a sentence, let's say, so it sets the boundaries for, for the call. So it's important when you set your Zoom session in place that early on you set the context for this. And I started doing that earlier uh, prior to recording the session, I talked about, well, you know, if you need to share something, if it's a resource, put it in chat. And I asked you also that uh, if you can mute yourself out early on, if you can mute yourself, and when it comes out to speaking, you can unmute yourself just so it wouldn't interrupt the flow of the person speaking here. And Zoom is powerful on a lot of levels. So I want to talk to you about some of the features. There are features here that I, I, I made a cover. I also want to communicate that um, I haven't really studied Zoom. I haven't watched any of the Zoom videos on the website. A lot of what I know was by trial and error, and it's, it's taken me some time to figure these things out. You could certainly go on Zoom's website and probably watch videos on how they do a lot of these things, including managing participants, putting people in the rooms, and so forth. I'm going to share my experience of use, using Zoom. It may not be 100% accurate, so I just want to communicate that in, in the context here that I'm going to set forth. In about maybe about 30 minutes, right now it's about 3.20 in the afternoon, about 20, 30 minutes, I'll invite you to maybe share some of your strategies, the ways, the ways you use Zoom, just so it's not one talking head. I don't want to be the talking head here. I'm all about collaboration. If you know me, everything I do, every structure, every business I'm involved with invokes some aspect of collaboration, teamwork as well. There's power in this tool. So my VA in the Philippines, we have a Zoom session in the morning 
I, for years, I've probably done about five to 10 Zoom sessions a day on average, whether they be short or longer, whether they be interviews, a podcast called Rules for Success, interviews using Zoom. There's so many ways of doing using Zoom, utilizing Zoom. So if you have a notepad, I wanna invite you to write any notes that you're getting from, from the session that we're talking about and any questions you have so I can add just questions later on. If I if we go back and forth into the questions at this point, it may just interrupt the flow of, 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 of what I'm about to show you here. So Suzanne, you asked me before about setting up Zoom. So, okay, so the thing to do with Zoom is that if you log into the interface, so I'm gonna share my, share my other screen. I have two monitors here. So it's helpful with Zoom to have multiple monitors. So a second monitor. So if you have a laptop, you can, if you buy, if a laptop or desktop, having a second monitor, it's really at minimal cost. In fact, if you go to Facebook Marketplace, you can find someone selling a monitor for anywhere it's from $20 to $50. And it's a highly effective monitor for that, for that purpose. But having a second monitor allows you basically to share screens. So you're doing a PowerPoint presentation on, on one screen. You can, you can actually look at the presentation with your notes there while the, the, uh, the second screen shows the actual presentation, the full screen. So just want to mention that very briefly. But in, so there are a number of advantages in being, being able to have that second monitor. Very low investment, $20, $30, basic marketplace. You'll find other, other sites online where you can get that too as well. So, and I'm gonna look at the chat here. So if you can't hear me at, for any reason, just let me know, so that's great. Second monitor is helpful, pretty productively awesome. AJ is fantastic. Yeah. And it's helpful too. So if you have like, like glasses, if you can go on Amazon, you can buy computer glasses. These are called gunners, but you can buy glasses as simply as cheap as three to three to five dollars. The advantage of a computer glasses is that there's often glare, blue, blue light that emits from these sessions. And if you have so many monitors around you, um, it could be very disruptive, especially around your sleep end of your day, trying to wind down, looking at monitors for 10, 12 hours a day can be very disruptive. So, you know, I, I, wear, I wear blue light glasses. There's also red tint glasses. Dave Asprey talks about red tint glasses. But whatever works for you to minimize and all this lighting around you, it helps quite a bit. Okay, so let's talk about Zoom and Zoom sessions. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna log into Zoom so I can show you the meeting itself. Okay, so we're in Zoom now. I'm logged in, logged into my account. So I have two accounts on Zoom. This account is a paid account. So I'm paying $70 a month for this account. And I have another account that's free. The free account basically, you have a similar interface. However, the limitation of the free account is that it limits you to 40 minute sessions, four zero. Today, 12 noon, a friend of mine Ran a Zoom business meeting session at, at 40 minutes, we all got kicked off the line because it wasn't a paid account. So, you know, if you don't have a paid account, the free account is accessible, it's usable, has most of the functionalities there. The only thing is that 40 minutes is limitations. You'll have to log off, log back in. So, in the context of your session, you may have to communicate to, to, to people on, on board to, hey, you know, this is a, this is a, this is a standard account of Zoom. Um, at 40 minutes, you will be knocked off. <laughs> So please use the same link to come back into the room. So that helps too, to communicate that because you know, for some people, the $70 can be an investment. And so I wanna mention that very briefly. So I'm logging into Zoom. So you can see upcoming meetings. I have no upcoming meetings, but I can just schedule a meeting. What'll happen is it'll give me the option of naming the meeting. So I can go, let's call this, let's say, scroll back up. I'm gonna call it, uh, let's see. Let's see, afternoon cafe meeting. So let's see, I'll have be a, a coffee shop meeting with friends, we're all drinking coffee together, let's say. Um, drinking coffee. Or tea and catching up. Okay, I'm gonna schedule this for, let's say for five o'clock today. I can today. One hour, one hour long is fine. So by default, Eastern time. 
I can make it a recurring meeting. So we actually have a recurring meeting that happens around, we do something like the Pure Momentum Networking Alliance every, every Friday at two o'clock, it's a networking meeting. So if I wanted to do that, I could certainly do that here too as well. I could require registration. If I did registration, what happens is that it, 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 it'll create a screen where it'll allow you now to collect you know, emails, contact information, and so forth. And that'll basically give you the ability to reminding people about the event itself. Meeting ID, so that you can do generate automatically or you can do personal meeting. So I personally like using my personal meeting ID. Okay, and the advantage, so there are two advantages in this. So, and I haven't had any, using Zoom for five years, haven't had any major issues with this. So the idea of the personal meeting is that Zoom generates your own room that you can use. And that, if you can send at any point when you want to schedule a meeting with people, you can have people go into that room and meet up. Now, the, 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 the advantage is that, with that is that if you remember that Zoom link, you can just send that to people on the spur, on, on the spot, and they'll pop up in the room without having to do any of this at all. Um, you can also forward domains. You can use a URL shortener like bit.ly, let's say, for example, go to bit.ly.com, and it's a free service. You can kind of forward to a domain, and you can have it go to that room itself. And I do that, actually. I actually use that. I use domains. I use a number of forwarders to be able to do that. And AJ, you do that as well with your online super coach brand that you have. Um, so that's the advantage of basically utilizing um, your own personal meeting room if you choose to. Otherwise, by default, Zoom will generate a room for you automatically. And so, and, and hence that, that code may not be as memorable. It's not a big deal, but it just takes maybe a couple more steps to be able to send people that specific room. You can also require a password if you want to, to add a, a little extra level of protection if you choose to. And, um, and there are other options here too also. So it gives me the options of having um, both options so people can call in by phone or, or use other computer audio. So one of the great things about Zoom is that if you were in the days in the past, you'd have to use a conference call service. And you, you basically it would be like a number and an extension. And with Zoom, you now have both options. So people can actually dial via a telephone or they can use a video option with the app on their computer. So you're giving people both options now. So it kind of eliminates the whole need of using a conference call by being able to have this. There are other options here too also, but I won't go into them so much, but let me now save this. I can also invite other people to be hosts if I choose to, but let me just go ahead and save this for this event today, 5 p.m. called Afternoon Cafe. And now it exists. So if I wanted to, I could take this, I can add it to Google Calendar. So if we go to my calendar and add it as an entry as well. And as you can see, it's prompting me to log in. Allow that. Allow. And the details are here. You can kind of see that. I'm going to zoom in. If you do control plus, you can kind of zoom what it looks like. So that's the event, the event details. Those are the specifics. I can now invite people to this event using Google if I choose to. Um, and let me just unzoom that, the more details on the meeting itself. Like I said, this was a meeting that it generated. So hence, it's a bit of a longer link to go with that. It's not the uh, default room that you have access to with Zoom, which is what I prefer to use. So Suzanne, I'm gonna actually see if I can invite you. I probably have your email here as well in the midst of this. So. I just invited you to it so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Okay. Great. And that's simply just kind of a scheduler with Zoom. I can do the Outlook Calendar, Yahoo. I'm sure there are other calendar features here too as well. Zoom also has a feature called webinars. So this is an added feature. It costs an additional $40 per month. The meeting itself allows you to have up to 100 attendees at once for a meeting. And you can pay for higher packages that can allow you for more than 100 people in that meeting. Even the free account allows for 100 meeting, 100 people, I believe. I'm not 100% I'm positive of that, but I'm pretty sure it's 100 people. The limitation is 40 minutes. But the paid account, the $17 per month account, allows you to have 100 people. And you can be on a call all day long, 24 hours long. So I could be on literally from, from 12 a.m. to 12.01 a.m. until, um, uh, until 24 hours later, I could potentially have a meeting before it kicked me off. 
The webinar feature has other features. You can have up to um, 100 video participants and 10,000 attendees on the webinar. There are other higher packages of the webinar too as well. At some point in the past, I had the webinar account. The webinar account is useful if you want to, let's say, do a presentation. It's just you on the screen. So everyone who comes on board, who watches it, uh, they're basically just watching you. So it's like less interactive of sorts. You could have more people, more attendees on the webinar. It's another advantage. Another advantage could be that um, as you create an event, it sends out reminders every maybe three hours, four hours, you can set up reminders for the webinar itself. So that's a webinar package. I don't have it anymore, but I, I did at the, in, my, in the past, and uh, I don't really recommend you invest into that because I think the $17 per month version of the pro account is sufficient. Small investment, but provides a lot. Um, so these are previous recordings that I've had. So you can do cloud recording, or you can record locally to your computer. So in this case right now, we're doing, I'm recording locally to the computer. And the reason why I'm recording locally to the computer is because the cloud recording is limited. It might be one to two gigs, perhaps. So at some point you run out of space. Whereas if you have a local computer, then you're, most, most of us have computers that can hold maybe half a terabyte or maybe 200 gigs. So um, the space, if you do enough of these the way I do them, the space does pile up. In fact, I bought an external hard drive that's about a terabyte to transfer these files to directly. So where do the files go? So by default, I'm just gonna do a search. So I have a PC. So um, I'm just doing a search for Zoom. It'll show me specifically where these files go. And they're gonna go into this folder. And the files, three files that get saved, audio, playback, and the video itself. So typically after an event, I'll take the Zoom video file, I'll put it onto Vimeo. I have a Vimeo, Vimeo account or YouTube, let's say, or you know another place perhaps, but then I'll, I'll be able to take that recording and share it with um, a community, that community that I'm working with. So that's basically how the video feature works. And uh, once again, just copy that, any questions you have, because I'm sure you will. I'll, I'll do my best to cover these later on. As you can see, these are several different Zoom sessions I've done in the past. Um, and uh, this can, eventually this can pile up very quickly. It can have a terabyte very easily. So at some point you wanna transfer the files to a hard, hard disk or online. Um, that's providing you are recording your calls. You don't have to record the calls. The BNI call that I was on this morning with 120 people was not recorded. Some, some people choose specifically not to record the call. For example, if, if you're in a 12-step meeting because the privacy of the, the communications that are there and so forth, then you probably wouldn't want to have that, have that being recorded um, for, for that purpose. And it also kind of builds trust when you don't record meetings. So some meetings you do want to record them, some meetings you don't want to record meetings. And that's the name nature of recording. So let me go back to Zoom itself also. So anyhow, these are the settings. Uh, I'll, I'll come back, I'll likely come back to this again because I'm sure there's something that I'm not covering here, but I want to just show you specifically something that I do that I find very helpful. All right, so Zoom gives me a link and it's basically my own personal meeting space room. So the URL is this. So when I found this out um, years ago, it was a game changer for me. That I could say, if I had my own personal URL, my, my, own, my own personal room here. So I, what I realized is that I could take this link and I could schedule meetings on the fly with anyone I chose to without having to actually go through this whole process and schedule a meeting at a certain time. I could just have this one link. And a game changer that's helped me is that I went to GoDaddy, and I'm a big believer in domains. I've actually you know, I've acquired quite a, quite a few in the past. The thing with, the, with GoDaddy is you can use your GoDaddy as a means to kind of buy a site for maybe $10 and forward that site to, to, to a, a link, right? So many of you got on this call through this link that I provided called jvzoom.us. Right. This was not this is not a scheduled call within Zoom that we're we're on right now. It was simply a link with that I, I sent to you. Or perhaps you use the link I just showed you before. But all I did is if you go into GoDaddy, if you go to manage DNS, you have the option now of let me just show you that very briefly. You have an option of if you go scroll down to the bottom, forward the domain, you can forward it to a, a link. So you can have you can now you can see that it goes in right into my Zoom room that Zoom provided me. 
So the thing is, I have probably about six or seven domains based on different brands that I that I that I work with that forward to the same link. And it just it just it's just the context of how people know me within each of those different brands. So that's one thing you can do with a dot live domain. So with GoDaddy, most people think of dot com sites. So there's also a dot live domain. So for example, we have rules for success dot live. We have success circles dot live. Um, so for a four dollar domain now that you acquire, you can have it now forward to this room and now send people a link to that, that live that live domain and it'll work just as well. So whether it be .com or .live or any domain extension, basically just scroll down into the settings. If you, if you want to rewatch any of this, I'm gonna send you the replay for this so you can um, rewatch this whole session and see exactly where I inputted that setting. Just simply edit it, make sure it's HTTPS. That's basically the link. So zoom.us, you basically wanna duplicate the exact link that is in there in Zoom. So basically it's taking this whole link, putting it in here, deleting the first part of it and ensuring that it's HTTPS. And all that means is it's a secure domain, secure sockets domain, and you're hitting save. That's if you choose to do this. I don't recommend you do this with masking, just do the forward only. Sometimes the masking can mess it up too. And there are different reasons why you would do this for other different projects, but this, I just find this to be very useful because I can schedule a meeting any point and you know i have different domains that forward to different things for certain pur purposes to make things very easy for my customers or my clients or the people i engage with to to connect with me easily via like one one link so i just want to share with a share that with you very briefly that that is an option once you have that link to be able to forward something you can also use bitly or another free year old shortener, like, like Google has a shortener too, to do the exact same thing. It'll save you the make it's it'll save you making the four dollar investment toward buying a dot live domain if you choose to. Just want to mention that very briefly. Um, so that's basically how you set a Zoom, a Zoom meeting. So it's it's you can do it recurring, you can do it on the fly, as you mentioned specifically with this at this link. Um, it's just about making it as easy as possible for your customers to engage with you. Okay, so that's. I would likely get back to Zoom into this interface very soon because I know there are probably, there are probably, there's probably something that I haven't shown you here based on the questions you have. So, so I just wanna mention all of that. And there's a lot of complexities to Zoom role management. Don't let, it, don't let it overwhelm you. It's a very simple platform. Prior to Zoom, what was very popular was something called Skype, right? So even different business projects I've been working with, uh, you, can, I could, you could kind of engage with people and go back and forth and, um, you can do video call, let's say, with people, and it was useful. It was, it was, it was very useful prior to the, the creation of, uh, of, um, of, of Zoom. But the thing with, the thing with um, Skype, this is my experience, it's Microsoft bought Skype as a company, and uh, it's just not as robust as a platform. Sometimes people will post to me, and I'll find out maybe three or three, three, four weeks, three, four weeks later that they, that they posted. So it's just not as robust. And when it comes to doing group sessions on Skype, once again, it's, sometimes it's not as clear. Um, people people fall off. That's just my experience. You know, with Microsoft buying Skype, it may it may be a bit more robust than it used to be, but it's just it's just it's just my my experience with uh, the Skype overall. There are a number of different solutions other than Zoom. Zoom is one solution. So with with my business success circles, we also invest into into uh, something called Uber Conference. So. Um, I'm a big believer in collaboration and managing teams. And what that means is if you have the ability to put people through a room, which Zoom does, it gives you the ability to kind of engage them in unique ways or have them network on their own in that room itself. And I'll show you how that, how that works here in this, this Zoom session. Um, so there are very few platforms that allow you to do that. So the one, one that I used years ago that's still, it's still out there, it's called Maestro Conference. Basically, it's like Zoom, but it's all conference-based, so it's basically, you have to like dial into it, right? Um, the one that I like to use now is called Uber Conference, and I wanna show you that briefly, too, just so, let me just move this menu here so it's just not as distracting. That's the Zoom menu there. Basically, the great thing with uh, Uber Conference is that you have a, a number, and it gives you an extension you dial into. You can actually see everyone online, so I'm gonna hit Start Conference, and um, there's a video component to it. So it's, it's actually, the video is not working because Zoom is using the video, but it actually 
gives me a video component just like Zoom. I could also um, dial out to as well. So the great thing about the account version I have, $100 a year, I think I'm paying for it, gives me a direct number. So I give this number out to my clients. They can dial into this number at any point throughout the day they want to. I have a meeting with them. There's no scheduling, anything of that sort. They just dial into it. And very similar functionality to what Zoom offers, but it's basically a conferencing platform that has now, they've added recently video technology to it. So I just want to mention to you, there are tools, there are resources, there are other solutions out there other than Zoom. There's also Google Hangouts. So if I go to Hangouts, let me just show you Google Hangouts very briefly. You know, I can do video calls here too as well. You can see what it looks like. This is tied to one of my, this is tied to uh, one of my Gmail accounts. The thing with Google Hangouts is you need to have either a Gmail account or Google, Google Apps account. And you can do similar things to Zoom too as well. But you know, there, there are, it's not, it's not perfect. And sometimes every, not everyone has a Google account, let's say, and, um, it, it, it's, it just takes a little more know-how to be able to kind of utilize this, you know, versus Zoom, which is so easy. I think their brilliance with Zoom is they made it such an easy platform for anyone to use, to tap into, to be on a call instantly where they can network, socialize, connect without doing much, which is essentially how I use, use it. So that's a lot about Zoom, and I know you have questions. I'm not looking at the chat feature just, just yet, but I'm gonna look at it very shortly. Um, the recordings are on the cloud, but you can record them locally. I mentioned that before too, as well. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Let me now go to your questions now, before I open the screen up completely. Okay, so let's go to questions that people have. Hold on a second. Okay, what's the web, what's the webinar and the meeting? So the webinar, okay, got it. I shared that already. So basically, the webinar is it's kind of like one avatar on screen. And everyone else, you can't really see them as well. So that's that's what that is. Okay, awesome. Do you ever integrate with Slack? Yeah, I do integrate with Slack. So even years ago, I used Skype for a lot of my communications. So we moved to Slack completely, and Slack is an amazing platform. So um, yeah, so it's basically, Slack is a multi-threaded platform that allows you to communicate with your team. So these are some of the platforms that this is, these are some of the communication channels we have, and. Uh, Using a hashtag, you can kind of, based on a topic, I can um, t talk to um, my team based on uh, like strategies that we're taking on that, that hashtag. So basically, we have different channels here on, 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 on Slack. I don't want to overwhelm you with any of this stuff. I can show you how Slack works, but the point being is that there is integration with, with Zoom, and um, um, you can, if I wanted to meet with my team and schedule a, a, a Zoom meeting in here, I could do that very easily through that integration. We have it set up here. However, once again, I mentioned to you that it's a lot easier. So when I have Jimmy and my team um, meet me, meet me on, 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 um, on Zoom, I just gave him the link jvzoom.us. Let's go there right now. And he knows, he knows to do that. I'm gonna mastermind every week with a friend of mine. She's in Canada and she just goes to jvzoom.us. It's like, you know, seven letters for her to remember. She just goes to and she is able, able to get to that site very easily. So even though the integration is here, um, um, we don't use it fully because we have, uh, we have uh, the link to my domain. If you did have a larger team, let's say, if you did have a, a more of a beyond professional account, let's say you had a 10 user account, then it would be impactful managing your team to have that integration because any, any one of your team leaders or people on board your company, different leaders in a company who are using um, Zoom, you probably wouldn't want them to be on the same channel, especially if you're all in, in, interacting at the same time, you have multiple Zoom sessions, which can happen, especially when, when companies get bigger and so forth. For me, it's just me and a couple of virtual assistants overseas, and that's how my business operates and so forth. It's a great question, thank you. Go to, let me go to, um, other thing questions too as well. So Google Hangouts, we talked about that. I think there's a cap on how many people can be in the meeting. Yeah, there is a cap. I'm not sure what the cap is. I could Google search that right right now and figure that out. Most everything I show you, you can go to YouTube or go to Google and figure out what the cap is, the specific numbers are. So I just want to let you know that that's a great resource. Um, okay, Michelle, thank you for showing the features. If you shared a link like JVZoom as you ask, Anyone could join anytime, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I could put a password on, the, on that if I chose to, if I wanted to, there, there, there are different ways of doing that. But, um, but I haven't had an issue. I really haven't had an issue 
you could be having a private session and someone could actually, that, it, it is possible. Um, it is very possible. And I will say that in five years of using Zoom, that hasn't happened to me so far. Um, so that's, that's, just, that's, that's just something that's there. But in the event you did a private session, you could very well um, put a password on it. That's one option. Um, and, or you could schedule a separate Zoom call with more specifics for the separate link. You could certainly do that too as well. So Richard, if I set up a small cocktail party, can the screen show up to eight people at a time? We can have a, a party of 100 people if you wanted to, a cocktail party. So you can certainly do that. Um, let me unshare my screen. Okay, but I'm going to get back to, I'm going to get back to Zoom very soon because I want to talk about how using Zoom, you have the ability of going even beyond all of this. So if you have Facebook or if you have YouTube, you could use Zoom to, um, you can you can you can send the feed to either Facebook or to to YouTube, and hence be able to engage thousands of people, you know, even though there's a limitation to the account. I want to mention that very briefly. I'll show you how to do that very soon. So Richard, you have a question. So and I might unmute you also, Richard. Let's go back to the gallery view. Okay, it's great to see you, Richard. Richard, uh, my engineering school in Hoboken, New Jersey. We haven't seen you in many years, Richard. So it's great to see you. So. Do you want to expand on what you're asking? So if I set up a small cocktail party, can the screen show up to, to, to have eight people at a time? Yeah, what I'm thinking of is <clears throat> starting, uh, you know, like every night have different groups of people from like all over the country hmm. to chat, you know, um, and I figured it would be better to keep it limited instead of having 100 people, you know. Um, and so the, it's, that's what I'm thinking about. And I was just thinking, well, how do I set this up on Zoom? Yeah, great, great, great question. So it's, it's basically what I showed you earlier with regard to setting the meeting. So basically you have a recurring meeting, let's say every evening at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you know, like a little fun cocktail party, you could do that. I think it's great. I'm actually, I'm doing something similar also each week um, around, uh, copywriting with a bunch of my friends and um and uh yeah you just send people out that link and they'll show up and with the professional account the seven dollar per month account everyone will be here so you can have up to 100 people on the screen all around you could you could certainly do that and um the zoom highlights a person speaking at the time so the challenge is that if se several people are speaking at the time so zoom goes back and forth and you can hear the sound from someone's mic pick up and it might highlight them. So you wanna ensure that everyone's muted, let's say when they're speaking, or that contextually, as I mentioned before, when you establish a context of the meeting that people know that, hey, you know, um, just, just be mindful. This whole experience will be very cluttered. So uh, be mindful of your mic when you speak um, because you're all gonna be unmuted. So it's all about how you kind of set that context. But by default, if you did a party with eight to 20 people or 50 people, regular Zoom account, professional account meeting, it should work with everything you're saying. It'll be fun and engaging. And it really comes down to the context you established early on um, at the start of it. All right. Great, yeah, great, great question, fantastic. Great, awesome. Yeah, 100 people on free account. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a, it's a free service, so I know. Even the account I was on before with a video marketer, a friend of mine, he had a free account. After 40 minutes, we all got kicked off. But it's not a big deal. So people know contextually that they need to, to uh, sign back on 40 minutes later. It's not a big deal at all. That's great. Any other questions you have? Anything else I could show you? I'm going to show you the live stream piece of this very soon. And I'm also going to show you how to um, bring people to rooms, which is which is one of my favorite features of this. And Suzanne, I know you also uh, you you wanted me to walk through the whole s setup session with Zoom the account. Hopefully, I, I think you that. sort of did that. Um, I have a question about. Um, sharing control. Sorry, I'm not re realizing that I'm on video. Um, sharing control with like another leader, and or sharing control. Uh, like I understand that Facebook now doesn't allow two people to be brought on screen at the same time. So if you want to do a Facebook Live, you have to do it yourself. You can't bring someone else on. So people were saying you have to use Zoom now in order to do that, yeah. which I don't really know uh, a lot about. This is all hearsay, haven't tried it. 
So I'm interested in how you would, like say I wanted to have a Zoom, a, a Facebook Live, but I wanted to have a guest teacher with me. Yeah. That's a question. Great, yeah. So there are a number of um, platforms that are compatible with Facebook allow you to do that. BeLive is a BeLive.tv was the one I was using previously. But Zoom actually does that. So there's no need to invest into BeLive or some of the other platforms that are out there that do this. So you would have that person show up on the Zoom session. So it's you and that person on the Zoom session. And then there's a feature on Zoom. So let me show you, let me show you that briefly. Let me see if I can show you that menu with that. And I'm gonna meet you out, Richard, on your end. No big deal. The great thing about Zoom is you can meet people out easily. It's no big deal at all. And it's, 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 it's uh, so we can all be doing, or even at Uber conference, you can meet people out too as well. So how do I show you this without having, okay, let me see if I can show you the screen now. Okay. This might be a little freaky because <laughs> it's going to now show you what you all look like here, right? And this may or it may not, let's say, okay. So let me know if you can see my screen because sometimes you do like a whole window, window and window and window when it gets a little, that, that might happen, but. I can see it. Perfect. Great. Awesome. So you see the background success is a sum of small efforts. You see that you see the chat menu here too. Is that correct? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So I can go into zoom and I can do, let's see, here are a lot of options here. So I could share a screen sound if I wanted to, I can hide the video panel if I wanted to, I can hide floating and beating control. So I can, this whole meeting, this whole thing I can hide too as well. Also a bunch of little options of that sort that are there. I can pause recording. So if I go, to, if I live to Facebook, let me click on that. So what it's doing now, it's it's opening up a Chrome window. So I'm going to do a stop share. I'm going to share my other screen now, so you can kind of see what that looks like. So share my other screen. I could also invite one of you guys to share to share your screen too, so you can kind of share that role too if you want. You wanted to. So let's go back to Facebook. It's my other monitor. It's one of the advantage of having another monitor here. So I can go share on my timeline. I can also share into a group. So Facebook came up with this thing and it has six options here. Timeline, friends, timeline, group, event. You know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna share my own, own timeline. It's actually something I wanna share with you also that'll be very useful too. I wanna make sure I cover all these things. Okay, okay. Preparing for live streaming preview. Okay. It'll take a moment. Okay, it gives you some instructions here too. Bum, bum, bum. So I can go here and I could say um, Zoom um, session with friends. Join us at http colon slash jvzoom.us. I can also copy that and I can say, put that into the title if I wanted to. So call it Zoom Session with Friends. And I'm not sure what the video game factor is, <laughs> so I don't know what that, fuck that is, but basically it gives me stats on the resolution, the bit rate. Some of this is based on the quality of the tech I have here, maybe the camera. But now I'm gonna hit this button, go, go live. So right now on Facebook, we're about to go live. And if you look, look at the Zoom session on the upper left or somewhere on your screen, it'll, it'll say about to go live. Right. It's redirecting the Facebook Live page. And if you have your phone by you, you can actually see the live stream happening there. So if you want to uh, comment on that or even share that across different pages, you can certainly do that too. So you can say, hey, we're going live here and I can now share that into another group that I lead, the Near Power Team or another group I lead, so more people are engaging in that too. So Suzanne, if you're doing an interview, which I've done in the past with, with, with the series that I, I do, I could take that now Zoom session and forward it across 10 different rooms, so different people across different rooms are all interacting and commenting on it. The only thing is that if they comment on that room itself, then I may not be able to see that until I, unless I actually go into the Facebook group to see what they're commenting. So it can be a little um, kind of a bit overwhelming if that's the case. 
but you can also just say, hey, no, come, come join the meeting. So, so right now, I'm, it's, it's, uh, I, can hear, I can hear myself. So I think I'm hearing myself to my computer here. It's probably what it is. Um, great, and people are liking it. If I go into my feed, let's see if, if it's streaming. It's my beautiful family. And it's, it uh, is. I actually just looked at it and had to turn it off because it was too loud. Got it. <laughs> Got it. So I'll, I'll make sure I, I stop sharing. But just so everyone Facebook watching this right now, we're doing a Zoom session on how to use Zoom. Zoom is a pretty amazing technology. There's a few out there, but Zoom is probably the prevalent technology that I'm sure at this point about half a billion people on the planet are utilizing toward engaging, creating meetings, uh, having cocktail parties, as one of our members of the session just talked about doing interviews, really sharing your superpowers. There's so many ways of using Zoom. Right now we're live streaming it onto Facebook. That's where it's happening. In fact, I'm going to un, I'm gonna stop the, uh, so I'm gonna stop the screen share, stop share. So it's back to all of us here now currently. So that's, that's, that's that. So everyone on Facebook can see us. So we're streaming on Facebook. Now there's also the option of streaming on YouTube. So if you, let's say, wanted to even tap into even a larger audience. There was a program that Tony Robbins, you know, launched a few weeks ago, and I think they used, they might have used Zoom, perhaps. I think they did. Maybe, you know, there was another platform. But it was streamed onto to YouTube. So they're able to have, at that point, close to maybe about 50,000 people watching that session at the time through, through YouTube. So you just have to pre-configure um, Zoom in advance with your YouTube channel. And that's the way you would do it. And perhaps let me, perhaps if there's a little time, I'll show you how to do that with YouTube it's, itself. If that really does make a difference for you to be able to do, it's very similar to what I just showed you with Facebook. The only difference is that you're logging into your, your specific uh, uh, Gmail, Google Apps account to be able to put it onto your YouTube channel. Okay, but I want to kind of go through other questions that are here, make sure I cover this all. To all of you in Facebook, Zoom is very an easy platform to use. The default settings do work. You can optimize it further to, to um, make it easily shareable when you're engaging people. Um, it's a pretty cool platform. <laughs> and I'm sure their stock's really skyrocketing because of all <laughs> this, right? Do we do think it is? I probably, I probably should invest more into it. Um, it's great. Anyone else have any other questions? Okay, AJ, you've been in the meeting at 4 o'clock. Thanks for being here. I appreciate that. I need to step away, so got it. Fantastic. Um, anything else I can cover for you around this? Hey, Joseph, I'm curious about not necessarily Zoom so much, but uh, some of the other audio equipment that you use as far as microphones or yeah. speakers, things like that, especially when you're, you know, doing a, a coast co lead with another individual, how to ensure good, clear audio. Great question. Okay. So Here's one of my best recommendations. So um, I'm a big fan of voice, and I, I know Suzanne used to you, you teach Linkletter voice. Um, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity of learning from from um, Susan years ago. Uh, um, but I, I, I'm one of the most important things when it comes to video is not necessarily the video quality. Video quality is important, but what's more important, my friend AJ, who's on the session before, he's a is a coach. What he's indicated to me is that sound, how robust your sound comes across, is more impactful. So being, having people being able to hear you very clearly, it's, it's, as, it's probably more important than the video quality itself, especially if you're looking to convey a message. So I'm, I'm a big believer in using uh, Blue Yeti mics. So I have three of them. So I have a nano mic in that corner there, so I can do like a Zoom session that side of the room. And I have um, a regular Blue Yeti mic here. The reason why I like the Blue Yeti mic, so I grew up in New York. I'm a fast talker. Sometimes I eat my words. So if you look, if you look at my ears, I actually have headphones. These headphones wrap into my shirt and allow me to, they plug into the back of the mic. And this allows me to listen to myself amplified. So as I talk to you, I'm also able to hear myself too. So if I eat my words or if I, or if I, if I, don't, if I don't sound as great, let's say, I can kind of course correct around that. So that's the advantage of the Blue Yeti mic. It's a condenser mic, but it has multiple settings. So you can have it actually go into like a less like condenser mode. Condenser mic picks up all sound around you. Um, but there are other mics out there that are optional that are available, but I like the Yeti a lot. 
because uh, it's a great voiceover mic too as well. And it's really all, all around great mic. And I love the feature where I can hear myself. So behind the, behind the Blue Yeti, there's kind of a, uh, like a micro USB cable, that sort of cable, and there's a headphone jack. So I'm plugged into the headphone jack. That's how, that's how I'm able to hear myself. I'm also able to hear you as well. Potentially, I could plug in um, my ear earphones into the computer. If I did that, then I wouldn't be able to hear myself. I would just be able to hear you, and that would be fine too. Some people are very sensitive to hearing their own voice. Perhaps you could, you do, you could do that. The advantage of using headphones is that um, um, it cuts out reverberation. So if you're using a laptop or a computer and you're, and you're, and you're interacting with people in a room, sometimes as people talk and speak, because the computer may not, may not be as fast enough or there might be delay in the zoom quality or the video quality, it may, the microphone on the computer now hears what, what was just said and it reverberates that and it can be very annoying. So you have to mute people out sometimes when that happens. So I love the Yeti mic, but of course there are many other mics to choose from that kind of allow for this. And you can get even get more advanced. You can actually buy a mixer and the mixer would allow you to like, let's say, um, connect a music player, let's say, into the system so you can play music at the same time as the session. Um, I've, in the past, I've done events where I, I had like a little music player like next to me that I would play and the, the, the um, like a, a, this vision board party, go to manifestmastery.com, you can watch it. I did that for one of our events and people didn't like the, um, the, the, the sound of the, uh, the, uh, the audio system I had because it was playing and the, the mic was capturing all of that. It wasn't as clear as let's say using a mixer. So there are a lot of investments. Can I ask a question? Yeah, I'm go sorry. for it, go for it, Suzanne. Um, uh, about what you're talking about right now. Yes. What did you say you, that you allows you to play the music through the system? Yeah, you can buy a mixer. So basically if you ever see a DJ um, yeah. manage an event, you usually have this device and I can show you one that I have on the other side of the room that I used to use for voiceovers. Um, mm -hmm. And it has multiple inputs. So you could potentially have three or four mics that go in there. Uh, you, can, um, it, it, you can set your gain, perhaps. This has a gain knob here as well, which is, which is useful. But the, the mixer has more advanced settings there, too, as well. And, mm -hmm. and you, okay. can also, you can also do an input. So the input, basically, on that mixer would allow you to have connect any device if you have a second mic, let's say. So let's say I was doing an interview with someone in my office and they were standing over there, I might, in that mixer, I might have their microphone plugged into there directly. So we have two mics now at the same time plugged into it. Mm -hmm. So just kind of more, more complexities into it. Thank it's, you. You're welcome, yeah. And it's not needed because in this day and age with technology and most of us have pretty, pretty good platforms, you and someone else could have um, good microphones on your ends and it would work just as well just as effectively. Hey Joseph, can I ask a question? Sure, Betty, please go for it. Um, what if, if I had a second screen, let's say, and I put on a YouTube or some sort of music channel and played that music while on the Zoom call, would that come through clear in your opinion? So here's, um, previously Zoom would not allow you to play video on, on, on a screen. So if, if I did that before and, and basically, but I, I believe there is a way now, I think Zoom has updated their technology, that if you did a screen share, or if you have a PowerPoint for that matter, and you played a video in the PowerPoint, it would play, right? So I can just Google search that very quickly. Just do, can, can you uh, play a PowerPoint video with sound on Zoom? And I, I know this is this doesn't answer your question exactly, but it's, it's the same same analogy. Basically, if you can do a PowerPoint video, that's the same thing as playing YouTube video. Right. So, so click the share button, Zoom, and the sharing. Because I'm going to share my screen now, so I can show you what it says. Hold on a second. And you can see. So click the share button. Like I said, it's the Google is a great platform. You can just just do a search for anything. Just click the share button, Zoom. The sharing window that opens. Click Microsoft PowerPoint. It's like if your presentation includes a narration, sound, or video, click the share computer sound box. So there's a sound box also within Zoom that essentially allows you to play the sound too as well. So that should work, Betty. I'm pretty sure. I think years ago when I tried this out, it didn't work, but I believe that that is the case. 
how do I share a video with sound on Zoom? So open Zoom meeting, ensure that you're logged in, click on the green share screen, share screen item. You will see a pop-up window where you can select your desktop or share computer sound. Yes, it's perfect. So year, years ago, you couldn't do that. They've enabled that now. It makes a lot of sense. So that's another way of doing that if you wanted to add music to uh, your setting too as well. So I just want to share that. We're going to go into uh, shared room. We're going to go into rooms very soon. So um, I'm going to unshare the stream to Facebook. So let me stop stream to Facebook just so people know that. And for any of you on Facebook, if you're interested in watching the whole session, just message me directly. I'll comment on this feed too with the whole video link. I'll upload it to Google Drive. So uh, you can access this if you see value in the session. But I'm gonna just, just do the, I'm gonna stop the live stream. I just stopped live streaming, so it's no longer on Facebook. It's just simply here in our community right now. And right now we still have, let me see how people, we have nine people on the call. I'm going to go into sessions, breakout rooms. I'm gonna talk about that right now. But before I go to the break rooms, any final, 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 final questions, any questions that come up that I haven't covered, that I haven't showed you just yet before we do the breakout rooms. Okay, <laughs> and I appreciate you being all here. So many of you, it's been over an hour being on the session. So I hope you get great value out of this. So the great the thing of breakout rooms is it's fantastic is you're managing teams. And so in my case, I facilitate masterminds. So we have like a, a, a event this Friday called the Peer Momentum Networking Alliance. Go to peermomentum.com, you can learn more about it. So it's like a networking meeting. So what I do, what I've been doing is that you might have 20 people on the call, I'll put, I'll create rooms, put three people in one room, five people in another room, three people in another room, and covering different topics around business. And when people go in the room, it's still recording, but it only records me now at that point. So whoever's on the main screen, it records that. But the rooms itself now have those people. So the advantage in this is that you're now establishing more trust. So sometimes when you do an event where you have multiple people, 20 people, people are afraid to share and connect and so forth. But when you put them into a smaller room now, where they're able to see two or three other people and you establish some context around that room, like maybe you provide a question. So we had a call yesterday, Betty, I think you're on that too as well. The question I pose is, what are five things you're grateful for in this moment? So I put people in a room and in that room, they were both, they were both able to share their answers to that question. Or it could be another question too as well. Or maybe, Richard, if you do an event, we do your, uh, your, 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 your party, let's say. You can say, hey, we're gonna go all the rooms now. You know, who do you wanna connect with in a room? So I'm gonna put Margaret and, and, and Victoria and, 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 and uh, Michelle in this room here, and Robert, Roberta, and, 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 and you know, Wyatt into this room here. And we'll meet back here in, in five minutes. And the thing with that is everyone's in a room, they're having fun, they're partying, they're, they're drinking their coffee, their cafe, what they're doing, they're networking further. And then you hit a button on Zoom and you say that, um, and you, you lure people in advance and say, hey, in two minutes, we're gonna all go back in the main room, announce to everyone, and I'll show you this feature very soon. Um, and then when you hit that button, says go back to room, what'll happen is that um, it'll give people a one minute notice and they'll all go back to the room at that point. So I'll show you this shortly. I'll, I'll actually show this right now. Um, but this is my favorite feature, it really is, because it just levels up the whole aspect of collaboration um, and en enables you to do extraordinary things with this now, especially if you're teaching classes. So as you're teaching class, as you're talking about business finance and or, or literature, right? And you, you're doing a book club, right? And you can put people in the separate rooms now talking one-on-one -on -one or, 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 you know, with a, a triad with regard to that book club topic. Pretty awesome. It really is great. I really love this feature. So let me show you how this works. So let me now share the screen. Okay. okay, so hopefully this shows. Okay, so it shows my screen now and it shows me all the participants here in this room. Right? Let me know also if this is not viewable. I can put this on my smaller monitor here because this is a huge monitor I have. It's like a 38 inch monitor here, so it might not be as clear. So now let's say I features, I can mute all. I can unmute all if I chose to. So, so I'm not gonna do that, but I'm going to now, let's see, play chime, enter, so that's not what I want. What I want specifically has to do with the rooms. Okay, 
I can give you I can give you remote control access, so I can have you control my desktop. Another feature of Zoom. So Zoom has a lot of it. I can annotate, so I actually draw on the screen. Let me just do that real briefly. So let's see, annotate, so you can see me writing on the screen now. Pretty pretty awesome feature that I can do that. Do a stamp, put a stamp on the screen. Let's say, um, so th they're always, you know, they had an investment a couple years ago from Sequoia for I think hundred million dollars. And ever since then, they've invested quite a bit in uh, the technology and the things they can do. It's pretty, pretty amazing. So let me get out of this now. <laughs> so just, I actually haven't used this feature before, so it was, it's fun seeing that there. But now I'm gonna, gonna manage participants and let's see if I can do this here. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually put people into rooms, breakout rooms, here we go. Okay, here are the, here are the options. I can, I can now, create rooms of, let's say, three people if I chose to, okay? There's, there's set, there are, I guess, seven or eight people currently in, in the session, so, or I can put people into, let's say, four rooms, okay? And I could do it automatically, allow Zoom to do it, or I could do it manually, okay? So let's do create rooms. So this shows up. So room number one, I'm going to now assign I'm gonna assign Amanda and Betty in number one. Room number two, I'm gonna assign, let's see, I'll assign Jan and Richard into room number two. Room number three, I'm gonna assign Alana and Tanya into room number, number three. Number four, I'm gonna assign Eric into that room. And Eric, I'm gonna join you in that room too very shortly. So here, contextually, so go back to context now. Context is basically establishing the environment. This is very important. So I'm going to provide you a question now to talk about in your room. So the question is, um, what's one thing you've learned so far from the Zoom session? Right, the, your biggest takeaway, okay? And uh, we'll go into the room and you can, I, I wanna ask, invite you to share back and forth. The person with the longest hair shares first. End of the context. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna open all the old rooms and and uh, let's see how this works. And I'll I'll also communicate. I'll message you all. I'll do an announcement in the room so you can get that get get any further communications from me there too as well. So here we are into the rooms and you should all have invitations. So you'll see a join option. Choose choose join, and I'll put you in the room. Great. So now I'm back by myself. Eric, I'm gonna join you too into the room. So let's see if I can join you personally. Join Breaker Room 4. So Eric, it's you and I in the room, so hopefully you're here somewhere. <laughs> oh. Good, awesome, fantastic. So question for you. So what's, what's the biggest highlight, what's the biggest thing you're getting out of the session so far? I, actually, the breakout room thing. It's something I didn't even know Zoom did, and I'm thinking about how I can use it. Awesome. Yeah, they're powerful too. It's my favorite, my, my favorite feature in Zoom, being able to, to do that. It's pretty, pretty extraordinary. Especially, yeah. um, you know, you lead these RPM calls on Monday. So imagine um, if you set a session and say, okay, the last 10 minutes, I want to invite you to now take what you learn and start planning out your week. So we're going to do an RPM mm -hmm. session. So you are, you're going you're gonna to be with a buddy and you're going to now uh, map out, your, map out um, your activities for tomorrow, especially clarify your why for your most important thing tomorrow. So mm -hmm. go, you put people in a room, they do that, they have a breakout session. It's like, it's almost like a seminar in a classroom where people are paired sharing, doing paired sharings. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. I think I'm gonna think about, you know, like I said, ways and your example was a good one, so. Perfect, awesome, great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic, so I'm loving doing this. I'm looking forward to getting some feedback from people too around their takeaways and uh, there may be something that I can learn to beyond all of this. And I, I am, of course, learning. The more we teach, of course, the more we internalize. For everything we teach, we learn twofold. It's something that right. my dad taught me years ago. So yeah. let me just leave the breakout room. So I'm going to leave the breakout room. I'm going to send an announcement to everyone. Okay. Return to main session. We're going back in two minutes. What's the biggest take away? So 
So I know this is recording still, so everyone's in the breakout room and I'm just showing people how they could use this as a means to, let's say you're teaching a class and in your class you do something called a paired sharing. So you give people a question and they now have the ability to go back and forth and answer that question. And it's pretty awesome to be able to do that. And sometimes it's useful too because you're, you want to change the state, kind of shift the energy. So being able to do that is very useful at various points. Kind of like simulating a seminar or a class, the idea of talking to your neighbor, talking about a topic and so forth. So we're going to go back into the main room now. So I'm going to let people know that we're heading back in. Okay, podcast. I'm going to close all rooms. There's a button here now that says close all rooms. 60 seconds, counting. So one great thing about the Yeti mic is that it has a mute function. I can hit it at any point. It's a very useful feature. Also, Zoom has a mute function too as well. Mm -hmm. That works. So Jan and Richard, welcome back. And Thank you. Everyone yeah. else will come back soon, very soon also. So this whole thing is being recorded. So I'm gonna share something with everyone very soon that I found very useful with regard to breakout sessions. So I'll wait for everyone in the 20 seconds. So it's actually counting back down, so you can kind of see what it's doing. So let me just do a share screen again. Yeah, share the screen, Joseph. Yeah, let me do. Let me, I let me, couldn't see how you set this up. Yeah, yeah, and this is this is all being recorded. So right now the breakout rooms four seconds. Everyone's coming back in three, two, one. So let's go back to rooms. Open all rooms. Okay. Oh, okay. So. so so I'm, I'm sharing the screen again, so you can kind of see what the, the setting is like. So, I, so I, could, I could, like I did, like I said before, that breakout rooms, I could do um, rooms of two, rooms of three, rooms of four, however I chose to, I could have done that. And I could join people. So I, I chose to join Eric. So all I did is I did join, and I joined Eric in a room right. a, a little while ago. So that's but basically, Joseph, yes. your, your, your main screen is, all, is not showing how you do this. Oh. It's, uh, I, which screen are you seeing now, curiously? The one that says success, sum, and day. Uh, is there something that says breakout rooms in progress? Do you see a window for that? Yeah, there is. But but the whole process didn't show up. Um, Got it. Yeah. I think the recording will cover a bit more of this if you watch it, I, because I went through it very fast. Okay. You. And I'm happy to have a separate session with you. We can kind of, uh, I can walk you through it later on. But uh, I think the recording will cover that. Let me actually do something here too. So I think that um, my concern is that because this monitor is so big that things may not be as clear as they could be. So I'm gonna just basically stop the share and I'm gonna now share my other screen now, which is a bit smaller, it's my laptop. So share my other screen now. This might be perhaps a little bit more easily viewable now. So it, it may not be, but let me know. So breakout rooms. So. I could broadcast a message to all. So while you're in the room, so I can say, hello. And it would broadcast a message to all, everyone in the room. I, I chose to manually, okay, so the battery's low. So that's good for me to know. I actually have to plug this in. So give, give, me, give me a moment. I forgot to actually plug this in before. So give me one second. I'm gonna turn off my video so I can kind of go out and plug my computer in. It's very important. So, so it's, it's, it's good to have a checklist before doing events. I used to lead webinars, just to be partnership manager for a webinar company about four years ago. And what I learned, the people who are experts in this are, have to checklists. <laughs> so this is a checklist, make sure your computer's plugged in. One second. And we're back here, so computer's plugged in. 
And I think there's someone still in a breakout room. So Alana is still in the breakout room. So let me see if. How do you know that, Joseph? Uh, Zoom gave me a message saying that Alana has a question. She's still in breakout room. So Zoom actually notified me of that. So I'm going to actually send. So it looks like Alana and Tanya are still in the breakout room. So I'm actually going to move them back into the main room. Move to close all rooms. All participants have been given 60 seconds to have their breakout room. So let me go back to share my screen once again. So one thing I learned being an engineer, and Richard, you went to Stevens as well, is that it's important to have checklists or having a standard operating procedure. So everything I do, if I had a checklist, um, it would kind of enable me to know what to do. For example, I didn't plug in the computer. So imagine leading an event and all of a sudden the event ends because the computer wasn't plugged in. Plugging in the mic, plugging in the headphones into the mic jack. So having like a 10 step procedure makes things a lot easier because we, you don't want to think, you don't want to overthink when doing these events because I've done, done I've probably done upwards of about a thousand Zoom events over the course of the years. I know what to do. One of the things I've learned doing a lot of uh, emotional intelligence work is that when it comes down to doing events of a sort, you don't want to think too much. You want to be able to be fully present, engaging your audience, adding value. So when the tech stuff is managed ahead of time, you can now focus on adding value. If your mind, if all of a sudden your left brain is being active and you're thinking about fixing things or alleviating things, it can get you out of the flow. So something I want to talk to you also, it's the whole beauty of having a checklist. So use a Google Doc, use a Word document, use uh, anything you want, have a, a notebook next to you perhaps and just write down a list of all the things you want to cover or the, the things that would be needed to make this successful. Do 10 of these, but as you do ten, those 10, make notes, journal, like what's working, what's not working and so forth. So I'm looking at my screen now. So I think everyone should be back in the main room now at this point, right? So I believe that's the case. But so when I created the breakout rooms, I had the opportunity of, I have the option of putting people into rooms of three or four. I could choose, I could join people too. So I wanted to join, I was in a room with Eric. I could have also left the room with Eric and joined the room with Alana and Tanya if I wanted to as the group leader. I could have also changed rooms. So now that we're, out of the room, if I wanted to reshift this now as well and put you into rooms of four, I could do that too as well. So play with this room functionality, it's very easy. I would say I'd recommend early on do the automatic room uh, version. Then once you've gotten used to the automatic version, go into the full, the, uh, the manual. So it gives you two options, manually or automatically. And uh, so some more options are to move all participants to breakout rooms automatically, it's great. Uh, allow participants to return to the main session anytime. That's great. So I'm gonna actually check that off. So I, so I'm 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 actually put, putting people back in the room myself. There's a countdown. So the countdown is 60 seconds. This is default. I could put it put it to 30 seconds or two minutes if I wanted to, right? And uh, those are all features within all of this. And to open all rooms. I don't want to do that. Hey, just for some reason, I'm only seeing your main screen on your desktop and not where you're doing the room edits. Got it. Is that the case for everyone else too? You're, you're, you're only yeah. able to... Yeah, that's... Hold on a second. So let me just do that again. Share. And it just may be a function with Zoom sharing that may, may not be allow me to see that. Are you not able to see the breakout rooms, this, this button here, this, this uh, window? Breakout rooms? No. No. You're not, you're not, you're not able to see that, correct? Correct. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a screenshot, right? So I'm going to do a screenshot of what I'm seeing here, so I can kind of edit the screenshot. So on Windows, there's something called Snipping Tool, right? So I'm going to use that, and basically, I'm going to show you what I'm seeing here. Okay. Let me close this. Be a little confusing now because I'm looking at the screenshot. <laughs> now are you able to see the screenshot? Yes. Beautiful, okay. Question so on the breakout rooms, did you place everybody there or they got automatically put in two by two by two? He placed them. Yeah, I placed people, right? But there is the feature, there's an automatic feature, if I select, selected it, where it would automatically put you into the rooms. Okay. Right, so this is a, this is not the actual window, this is actually a screenshot of it, so 
It's a little, little hack I just figured out just now. But I could have, I could, and I, Eric, when you were there, I joined you. I basically, it's the breakout room four, I'm going to join Eric. I could have left that room and now joined Tanya in her room. Um, and after this all ends, I could reshift things and maybe do rooms of four as options. But this is the, uh, this is the feature that's there. So I apologize before when I did the screen share, for some reason, Zoom did not show that. And I'm sure that's a privacy component in Zoom that where it doesn't show you that. So that was my intention. So now with the screenshot, this, this graphic here, you can kind of see how that looks like here. So, um, so Eric, that's the room that, you're in, that I was with you before. And then I hit a button basically to go back to the main room. It gave you a 60 second countdown that allowed you to, um, to, 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 to go what's next. So that's the room function. I invite you to play with this. Use the automatic feature first and then do the manual feature once you've gotten used to it. It's very easy. I figured this out in one shot. Um, it's super easy. So I, I know I don't want to go too extensive into this. I know we're about an hour and a half into this right now, into the session. And I've got another meeting very soon. Actually, on this Zoom channel, someone else may join me very shortly for a meeting we had scheduled. So that might happen very soon. Um, this, is, this is very cool. So let me actually... Well, I'll let him know that that that, that. I was on a call with Dave, Dave Elliott's power team a couple of days ago and uh, met someone in there. And we, uh, my friend G Joy, and we're supposed to uh, meet on that on, on the channel very soon. Okay, so I covered a lot here. This has been fantastic, Eric. Fantastic. Thank you for the feedback. It's great. You've all invested a lot of time with me here just now. The replay will be available too very shortly, and. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything that's there that's really qu critical with Zoom. Have fun with it. Go with, go with it. Play with it. This is all about collaboration. It's all about community. Go create community. Go tap into superpowers. Find ways to teach skills. Um, put people in the rooms. So lead a class. Put people in the, this is the new age, right? For the next 90 days, we have to be able to do this, master this. And as you master this, as you get really good at this, you have the opportunity now of leveling up your business and maybe finding some way to go virtual completely with everything you do. I'm blessed because um, I, I made a choice 15 years ago uh, after my dad passed away to go virtual with my business. And I have been for all these years. And so there wasn't as much of an upheaval when this whole thing happened because I just it was for me as business as usual. And I want to invite you to see, find ways to leverage what you're doing to engage people, your clients, customers, some of the members of Success Circles, my community, they're coaches and they work from home and they're, they do sessions of a sort with their clients and they get paid six figures to be able to do that. And um, so there's a lot of potential with all of this. So just play with it, get on the court, right? Everything, all magic happens when you're on the court playing. So get on the court and make it happen. I wanna, cha I wanna challenge you, okay? So if you're willing to take the challenge over the next three hours, my challenge is that you set up a Zoom session, right? And invite at least 20 people to that session. If five people show up, it's fine, it's all good, but at least 20 people show up and, um, and, and make it happen. That's my challenge for you. It's anyone accept the challenge, right? Within the next four hours, you schedule a Zoom session. Fantastic, it's great, awesome, it's great. So this has been my privilege to be able to engage you, add value here. This has been recorded. We'll put this recording online so you can access it as well also. Um, um, thanks for all being here. Go rock it out. Go have an amazing week. And um, if there's something that you got a value out of this session, by all means, comment on the Facebook thread, on my Facebook thread. Just, commu just communicate what you got a value, the, your biggest takeaway. Um, it'll at least remind others to watch the replay. Um, and it may help them also get more value out of, of what they can do with Zoom too as well. For all of you in the virtual world watching this session, um, go collaborate, go, con go connect. You're not alone. You have community all around you. Um, I don't have windows in my office, but I have, you know, people, community around me that I can connect with here. And for me, that's, there's, there's, there's value in that, being able to talk to people, engage, add value in the world. Um, I built a business years ago that's all virtually based, and I know every day there are dozens of these communications happening every morning. And for me, there's something about that that that's magical that we're able to connect remotely virtually add value help each other out, out um in these difficult times so thanks so much for joining me have a blessed day and uh, i will talk you to you soon bye guys thank you joseph thank you so much yeah. for being here fantastic event really great so yes, I, I awesome. really, thank you I, I appreciate you all have a great day bye-bye thank you so much bye